So my process in these paintings is that I start in the digital realm. I generate digital images. The images that I paint onto are generated using an artificial intelligence model. I print those large on canvas, and then I actually design and apply a commercial grade vinyl stencil. I sort of paint abstractly in response to the image, and then I peel it off at the end. What it means about the process is that I, I both kind of only have one shot at the painting. Like once I paint it and pull the mask off, that's it. I was really happy to arrive here at WashU last year because it was the exact moment that I had sort of hit a block in my work. I couldn't progress anymore with the use of AI without the technical help. I've been working with Beck Kamilov and Shirin Shushtari in the McKelvey School of Engineering. They took my data set of 650 images and developed it into an AI model that works through a diffusion patch model they've been developing for a little while that can really aim to work at smaller data sets with higher accuracy. It's very hard for most image models to work with fewer than hundreds of thousands of images. In this case, such a tiny data set was challenging the limitations of where AI is at. What McKelvey is being very careful to do is make sure that that model isn't just collaging bits and pieces from different images, but instead truly inventing them and they, they have a way to measure that. It's really interesting how my work in painting and abstraction kind of aligns with how an AI diffusion model works. A diffusion model develops a model by inserting noise into an image periodically, systematically, and then the model learns to sort of generate an image out of that noise. It means it's interrupting and obscuring the image as it's learning. Interestingly, abstract painting does the same thing. It's trying to insert interruptions, obfuscations, complications, something irresolvable into a painting, into an image, because then it captures your ability to then sort of backwards process, how am I seeing this thing? What am I seeing in this painting? And then dissecting that backwards into understanding your own perception. The challenge of the big data sets and generating huge images is something that exists in medical imaging as well. We use patch training to address the big size, meaning that we learn part of the image, and the same method could be used in medical imaging and mammographies as well, because those are really big images, and the same uh, method can be used to address those challenges as well. The feedback from Tiffany on our work helped us to change the way we do quality assessment of the model that we have. We realized that in, the, in this application, in this collaboration, uh, we need to basically look at the elements of the image or parts of the image rather than the whole image and how those parts are consistent with each other. I can now talk to the McKelvey team about how does a diffusion model work, where are the um, data sets coming from, what's problematic about it, what are its strengths and failures. Their ultimate goal is accuracy, right? Their ultimate goal is to make these diagnostic tools accurate and safe for patients in a medical setting. For me, as an artist, I'm actually really looking to criticize those gaps or shortcomings. So in order to work with them, I had to sort of describe the ways that I wanted an, a sort of a failure, that I wanted to seek out the failure in order to picket those divisions and gaps and inabilities of AI in its processing in order to criticize it visually. I also think that abstract painting is uniquely positioned to criticize these generated images because in a lot of ways, these AI generated images are so slick, so smooth. And what abstraction does is sort of bleed into those seams and push them further apart and figure out where we can deconstruct an image and look at it more carefully. So as we're flooded with images all day, if an abstract painting can ask you to slow down for a minute and feel that perception happening, like feel that gap between the light that comes in your eyes and the way your brain figures out what you're seeing, that's super important to understanding and perceiving the truth or believability of images, the reliability of images, and how we sort of perceive the three-dimensional world.